seated. God's presence is more than anything. If you want to go out in the morning, ask for his presence. If his presence goes with you, everything is sorted out. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for another opportunity to hear your word. Speak to us. Speak through me. And let your name alone be glorified. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Let's appreciate the Lord again. Our God is a good God. The theme for the month is multiply. And you will multiply in all sides in the name of Jesus. And the uh, topic for today is the little for the plenty. The little for the plenty. And I pray as we listen to his word, everything that we think is little in our lives, the Lord will expand it in the name of Jesus. I thank God for giving me another opportunity. And I thank God for our pastor is right in New Jersey. Amen. And he sends his greetings as well. Amen. My text, by the grace of God, will be taken from the book of John, chapter 6. John chapter 6, verses 5 through 14. 5 through 14. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes and seeing a great multitude coming towards him, he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread? And this may eat. But this is said to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, 200 denary worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may have a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a lad here who has five loaves, five barley loaves, and two small fish. But what are they among so many? Then Jesus said, Make the people sit. Now there was much grass in the place. So the men sat down in number about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to the disciples. And the disciples to those sitting down. And likewise of the fish as much as they wanted. So when they, filled, when they were filled, he said to his disciples, gather up the fragments that remain so that nothing is lost. Therefore, they gathered them up and filled 12 baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves, which were left over by those who had eaten. Then those men, when they had seen the sign that Jesus did, said, this is truly the prophet who is to come into the world. May the Lord bless the reading of his words and the reader in Jesus' name and the hearers in Jesus' name. There's a power to multiply. Is, is, a, is our right to multiply as children of God. Is a right that has been given to us by God. It is, we are to multiply. Those are the commands that God has given us from the beginning. Whatever is placed in our hands must multiply. It cannot be stagnant, it cannot remain the same. God wants us to prosper in every area of our lives. In marriage, he wants us to prosper. Your children, he wants them to prosper. Your career, he wants you to prosper. Even in your business, your ministry, God is, we are designed to, to, prosper, to prosper in life as children of God. In Deuteronomy 28 verse 12, God in this world, says, God will bless all the work of your hand. He will bless the work of my hand. And I will lend to many nations, because you are not saying amen, I have to say it to myself. <laughs> you shall lend to many nations, and but you shall not borrow. That is the promise of God for us. Then God blessed them in Genesis chapter 128. Genesis chapter 128. And God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. After the flood, Noah started afresh. That same power of multiplication was released unto all of us. Does it seem you are in ground zero now or the flood has overwhelmed you? The Lord will give you speed. Speed of multiplication. In the mighty name of Jesus. Multiplication is when that little becomes so plenty. Feeding 5,000 was not easy. I went to Google how much uh, 200 denarii would be when it was in Jesus' time. It was it's about between forty to $50,000. They needed that immediately. And Philip said, Master, I don't know where we can get 50000 right here. To buy these people bread. But the Bible says Jesus knew what he was going to do. 
Before we examine the spiritual principles of our text, we are going to assure us that our little can become plenty. Example is the woman, the widow of Sarephath in 1 Kings chapter 17. Her last meal was to last her just for a, a day. She was planning to, to die after the meal. But that food lasted her for three years or more during the famine. She had a little. She did the needful. And the Lord and the little became plenty. In 1 Kings chapter 17, this woman said that, I have not been when the man of God went to her to give, us, to give him, Elisha went to uh, the woman of uh, the widow of Sarephath to give him some uh, flour, uh, bread. And the woman said, I have nothing but a handful of flour in a jar and a little bit of olive oil in a jug. Elijah said, Elijah, not Elisha, said to the woman, don't worry. Go home and cook your food as you said. But first, make a small piece of bread from the flour that you have, you have and bring it to me. The jar of flour and the jug of oil were never empty. This woman, she thought she had nothing or little. But she did the needful. And a little became plenty. Simon Peter too started with nothing. When Jesus went into his boat, what happened? It became fishers, not just fish, fishers of uh, the fishes we eat, but the fisher of men. The widow of the prophet, the same thing. She had little oil. I was wondering, why would these people say they don't have nothing? To them, they don't really have anything. But they say, we don't have anything. But that but, the Lord will increase it in your hands. In the mighty name of Jesus. Even if you have the promises and you don't do the needful, Nothing will work. You'll just be struggling. And I'll give you a, a soon to become big testimony by the grace of God. And Pastor Namdi was telling us this morning about if something is not going, stop and restart. There's nothing wrong in it. You know, we have been building this uh, school for a while. And the builder, the Lord will help our builder. We have to be positive and be, and be nice, Okay. We cannot say negative on the altar of God. So, <laughs> this builder refused to build as it is planned on the plan. And if you don't, do, if, if you don't build as to plan, this is the city of Katy. It's not the city of Houston or Harris County. City of Katy, they must, they, when they come to do inspection, they will look at everything on the plan. Must fit in to the building. No matter how much we prayed for favor, nothing happened because they did not build according to plan. Until they called them last week, I said, we are, two weeks ago, we are doing final, final, final. And when they came for the final, final, they said, ah, you were to fix some things in October. You did not fix it. And I went to God and God said, even in our lives, if we don't do the needful, no matter how much we pray, no matter how much we fast, nothing will work. You have to do the needful. Your life must be according to the plan. That's what the Lord told me. He said it must be according to the word of God. For you to multiply, you must, it must be according to the plan of God in your life. Your marriage is not working. What are you not doing? The Bible says if you don't provide for your family, you are like infidel. Because your wife, you are worse than an infidel. And because your wife is uh, paying all the bills, you think it's okay. And the woman is complaining. You say, why are you complaining? Why would she not complain? If you do the needful, God will multiply you. That's what the Bible says. God is still turning little to plenty. And we do so in our lives in Jesus' name. Let's consider some six principles real quick of multiplication. Number one, God can use anybody. He can use anyone. You can't despise anybody. The unknown can be used for the known. That boy's name was the lad. Nobody knew his father's house. Nobody knew his compound. They didn't even know what tribe of Israel he came from. Maybe he was even from Egypt or Samaria. Nobody knew. Or he was from Palestine. Nobody knew. He was just there to listen to the word of God. 
And God used them. He used them to provide food for 5,000 people. The, to ignore anyone may lead to God ignoring you. For what we sow is always what we reap. You cannot despise anybody. Because if you despise, you may be, you may be robbing yourself of breakthroughs. You don't know who God will use. Many have despised the people God has sent them. Even the men of God, God has sent them and they were following fake prophets. I've seen that a lot. Are you despising the people around you? You need to appreciate them. Number two, you must discover the little. And you have to ask yourself, what is my little? Andrew had to discover that boy that had no name, that had the bread and the fish. In John chapter 14, verse 8, John chapter 14, verse 8, Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, was one of the disciples. He spoke up and said, there is a boy here who has five small loaves of barley of bread and two fish. And he said, what good is that with all these people? Until you discover the little, the little remains nothing or little. Those two women, they said, well, I have nothing but this small thing. You may think, oh, I don't have food. But if you look right inside, there's still something you can mix together. You know all this food they are creating now is by creativity. You can create, it, create something nice out of nothing. The widow, I don't have anything. But she had little oil. Exodus chapter 4 verse 2. And the Lord said to Moses, what is it in your hand? And he said, the rod. We all have that rod. We have something that God has deposited in our lives. I came to the U.S. 20 years ago. I was 34 when I came to the U.S. I'll be 54 this year by the grace of God. Amen. When I came, the only thing I could do on computer is to turn it on. Even that turn it on, I don't even know how I got to know how to do it. But there was little in me that I never discovered, even at 34 years old. Until I got to America, and there's a need. There's a need. I will begin to do the needful. By the grace of God, there's nothing I cannot do on PowerPoint. Nothing on Excel sheet. Nothing on the word, in the word uh, on Microsoft. Why? Because you have to develop yourself. All those things that I learned are helping me with the trips that we do. The things I don't know. I go to people that know it and said, I saw you send this in on Excel. Can you teach me how to do it? The lady that does, oh, God bless that woman, Taiwo Adeboale in Canada. She's Kenny Ade Arugujo's, uh twin sister. She helps us with registration. Sometimes I would disturb her, disturb her, tell her, Taiwo, can you please give me the back end on how to do this, how to do that, how to do this? Because there's something in us. There's something in us that needs to be discovered. It doesn't matter how small it is. You need to develop yourself as individuals. You cannot just sit down and say, I have nothing. You have something. Some of us, when they get to our houses, I'm not good at that, let me tell you that. When they get, it's so beautiful, so well decorated. And I tell some of my sisters, this is a beautiful way of creating a business to be decorating houses for people like me. You take my money and you give me a good decoration. There's something in you. There's something inside of you. Is it your voice, your talents, which God has God given you? It's not nothing, it's something. Some people can produce uh, short, short videos. Some people, it could be dance. The girl Marie that married Bliss, it was through small dance. There's something in you. Ecclesiastes 9, 10 says, whatever your hands finds to do, do it with your might and do it well. That's another thing. Sometimes we do things anyhow. The little I do, I must do it well. The little God has given me, I will do it well. When you do it very well, you do it right, God will multiply. 
they told us this morning, though your beginning may be small. When we started the trip in uh, 2010, when I was 40, is that 2010? When we started it, we were only about 30 people to Galveston. Then we said, there's, there's more to this traveling. We went to San Antonio. We said, there's more to these things. We went to um, Florida. We went to, uh, we've gone to almost 15 states of America. Then we said, we could do more. We went to Cancun. Ah, ah, we could do more. We went to, we are going on the cruise. Amen. There's a seed of greatness in you. You cannot remain the same and sit in one spot. If Elijah had not visited that woman, she would remain small. We need God's visitation to bring out that thing in us. I tell you, those things that we do, planning of tree, you may think it's easy. It is not easy. Except by the mercy and the grace of God. If we were to give it to agents, there's no way they would charge us less than $400 per person, per head. Because it's tedious. But God said, I will deposit that thing in you because I know there's a time for it. So there's something God has deposited in you. But you are not making use of it because you are not using it right. But today, the Lord will bring it out and it shall multiply in your hands. Number three, Thanksgiving is a multiplier. Thank God for the uh, uh, praise and worship this morning. That was an unusual one. Let's appreciate the choir. Thanksgiving is a multiplier. The little you have must be appreciated. Andrew despised the little, but Jesus appreciated the little. Andrew did not see the benefit of the five loaves. He didn't see any reason that this thing is not going to go anywhere. That's why that eh, he's been with Jesus for a long time. He saw all the works Jesus is doing. He, seen the, he saw the blind open, eye open. He saw the lame walk, but yet he still believed that, no, these five loaves is too small. He did not say, Master, we got five loaves, but I know you can multiply it. What we do not appreciate, we depreciate. If you don't appreciate your spouse, in front of you, they'll be depreciated. If you don't appreciate the job you have, in front of you, your job will depreciate. If you don't appreciate the people around you, don't work in with you, they'll be depreciating every day. You won't see any value in them. I told them one, one day, there was one pastor that told us that every morning, his wife, he said, since he's married, that's the way it, it is, that the woman will come and kneel down before him to say, thank you, my husband. I told myself, oh, God, we have, I don't think I can do that. Even if I do it, I don't think it should last for one week. But of, <laughs> of recent, I had a reason to do it. Because when the man did something, I said, this is not extra, this is not ordinary. I met as a, ah, in front, in a public place, as a pastor, you are the best, thank you. He was very happy. Do you know, do you know that a day, a day, a day after, the devil brought something again. I said, no, the devil, you have to go away. Eh? I have to continue the appreciation. Because the devil does not want you to see reason why you have to thank God. If you don't see good in the people around you, you can't see good in what God is doing. God can do anything. We have to be grateful. We have to be grateful. We have to be grateful for people around us. We have to focus on the positive side of life. And the Lord Almighty will help us in the name of Jesus. There are times, even this Thanksgiving, some of you will say, what are those people thanking God for? I tell you, those people that came to dance this morning, there are issues of lives. But there's a God that is more than those issues. So we have to thank him. Because where there is life, there is hope. And when you are thankful, you are hopeful. That it shall be done. It shall be so. You are full of expectations. And the desire that your desire will be fulfilled in the name of Jesus. You see solutions than, than problem. When you are thankful, you see solutions rather than you see problems. You see light rather than seeing darkness. That is what thankfulness we do to our lives. Jesus gave thanks to his father and everybody ate. 
power of thanksgiving. Appreciate everything God has given you, whether small or big. Whether this project is being delayed or not, know that there's a se- Jesus is the center of it all. Jesus is the center of it all. In his presence, there's fullness of joy. As long as God is in, with me, I will be joyful. Some of us, you don't know what we go through. It doesn't show on our face because we have a God inside of us. We have a God inside of us that keep moving, pushing us and moving us on. You must appreciate everything around Every blessings of God in your life must be appreciated. Do not see any delay as God is not good. Do not see any delay as God is not working because God is working something out. I tell you, if we had finished that building a year ago, we wouldn't have completed the playground. We wouldn't have bought those two houses by the side. Why? Because God is always working something out. You are not married. It's because God is preparing. He doesn't want to give you, uh, I don't want to say, incorrect panangam people. Eh? He wants to give you a king. Eh? Where your first car will be a Rolls Royce. That is what our God can do. Don't see any delay. See it as the blessings of God. You have to be positive in how, how you look at life. If you are not, you're going to be depressed forever. You're going to be depressed. Sometimes my teachers will come. Miss Yadi, when are we moving? Don't worry, we are moving. I have to be encouraging them. Though sometimes I need encouragement myself. But I have to be encouraging them, encouraging them. So once I encourage them, they said, okay, we get it. They have to get it. <laughs> And if they don't get it, there's nothing I can do. (laughs) Amen. Number four, you must part with the little. It is a seed. John chapter 14, 11. Jesus took the bread in his hands and gave thanks. You must be able to. That boy was such a giving boy. A small boy that decided I'm going to give up. Some some people even had all day. We hide that lunch so that nobody will see it. I'm sure it wasn't only that boy that had lunch in that out of 5,000 people. But he decided to give up what he has. The little is to provide solution to a problem. That little idea you think is, it doesn't make sense. You share it. You may think it doesn't make sense. It may make a lot of senses. The little blessings. Be a blessing to others. Give it up as an investment unto God. By the grace of God. If you are here and you have people maybe in Africa or everywhere, you know that they really need help. Out of your little, give them and see what God will do in your own life. Abraham released Isaac. That boy released his meal. Hannah released Samuel. And the Lord gave us our Lord Jesus Christ. You cannot say because I don't have money. There's something that you can give. Number five, you have to get organized for the plenty. This is a topic on its own. Most of us are not organized. You have to be organized. Organization means that you you are ready for multiplication. Everything you are doing must be well organized. You can't do it anyhow, anyway. And there are people that want to come into your life to, to disorganize you. You have to help them. You have to reorganize them. Amen? Like in our children, many, some people say we should move our time. They have to move their own time. Because people will want to disorganize you. No, you have to reorganize them so they can follow organization. If you are ready for multiplication, you must be organized. You must be very, very organized. If you are not, you are not ready. If we are not organized in taking children from here to there, you think we'll be doing people with this trip we are going on, we are 220 already. You have to, even the airlines, they make mistakes. I'll be the one to correct them. I say, tell them, this is not what you're supposed to do. When you are organized, you are organized. But I'm not organized in everything, no, but in some things I am. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Luke chapter 14, if you look at the same account in Luke chapter 9, 14, Jesus he told them, let them sit in 50s, in 50s, in 50s. If we all want to exit this building, say, everybody let us go. That's disorganization. We have to do it, we can say row by row, line by line, children, women from this age to this age, we exit through the right, this place to this place, we exit through the right and no left. No matter how much you say it, some people will still go the wrong way. This is from experience. Some people will still go the wrong way. So, learn to be organized in anything we are asking God to do. Organization is key to success. Tell yourself, organization is key to success. You can have all the energy. If you don't have the organization, you will be a failure. Get organized for what you are praying for. God loves order. We must get organized ahead of our plenty. God did not allow the plants to grow until he found a man to till it. So you must be organized in everything you do. The ushering job they give you, be organized. Whatever thing you are being do, do, given to do, be punctual, be organized. And the Lord will make it to be plenteous in Jesus' name. Number six and the final point is, the little in the hand of Jesus makes a difference. Leave the little in the hands of Jesus. Until the love got to the hands of Jesus, it was never multiplied. The worth of your investment is a function of who is holding it. You, nobody pays interest on investment than God. I, I can tell you that. Surrender everything is the one that does not make the uh, cup to dry. Everything you have, surrender it to Jesus. We had the story of uh, the founder, as I round up this morning, of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. Jesus is the one, with Jesus, your cup can never run dry. Your gas can never finish. You've heard the story of, uh, about the general overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. I said, on empty tank, it drove from, like, Dallas to Houston on empty tank. With Jesus, your tank can never go dry. So this, they share this testimony. This is life story that happened this, uh, last, this century or last century of the founder of Redeem. They said Geo General Vasier Adiboy shared the testimony of what happened to his father and the Lord, the founder of the church, Parki Diomi of blessed memory. Many years ago, while the ministry was already on course, they had no money. Things were very difficult. The founder could not afford to buy meat for soup. So he went to the Lord to ask for his help. And God told him to instruct his wife that each time she's bringing soup out of the pot, that she should not be looking inside the pot. The woman tried. And so each time Mama dipped the um, spoon, she will bring in chicken. Today she will bring in cow leg. Tomorrow it will be goat meat. And if you were mama, what will you do? What will you do? Until one day, mama decides, ah, uh -uh, where is this thing coming from? And they said the thing dried up. You can never understand the doings of God. We cannot know the source of his power, of his strength. Our home is to just rely and lay on him and trust in him because he's our helper. Let's rise to our feet this morning and worship the God that we serve. Maybe you are here this morning and that Jesus, you don't, his presence, you don't even know what it means to be in the presence of God. It's an opportunity God cannot give you anything if you do not give your own life to him first maybe you are here this morning you want god to be in your boats just like peter you want god to multiply you just like he did for those five thousand i want you to lift up your hands to jesus the rest of us we can be praying and ask god for multiplication in every areas of our life but you are here this morning you want god to visit you his presence 
to be upon you. You do not know what it is to be a child of God. You, I want you to raise your hand. Only you should raise your hand now. If you want to give your life to Christ, anybody here want to give your life to Christ? Lift up your hand. Let us see if you want to give your life to Christ. Lift it up so well. If, if there are nobody, everybody let us cry to God and say, God, that my little revealed to me. Some of us, we don't even know what our little is. That God should reveal our little, that thing that we think we don't have. That the God should reveal to us in the mighty name of Jesus. Ask the God to reveal to you in the mighty name of Jesus. That which you would that little. There's something in you. There's something inside of you that needs to be discovered. It doesn't matter how old you are. The person that started KFC, I, they said she started at 65. Some of you are not 65 yet. There's something inside of you. There's a seed of greatness inside of you that needs to be discovered. You say, God, ha, help me. Just like in, in Genesis chapter 32, when Jacob had an encounter, he had a greatness in him. God changed his name to Israel. I'm going to ask the Lord that God, that seed of greatness inside of me, there shall be a revelation. You must reveal it to me. I must multiply. I cannot just be on one spot. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We are so grateful. Thank you for your presence in our midst. Father, we are so grateful. As we go today, Father, reveal to us that seed of greatness that needs to be multiplied in our hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's appreciate the Lord.